Hello and welcome to Phelps Field. My name is Aiden Dunlap. Alongside me tonight, I've got Ross Jernstrom. We're looking to have a really good matchup tonight, Ross. It's the number nine Bellevue West Thunderbirds against the number one West Side Warriors. Yeah, this is a great matchup. Both these teams are highly ranked and were expected to be going to the state finals at the start of the year back in August. But I'll tell you what, it's a beautiful night for a November football game. 53 degrees and the wind is about seven miles per hour. It's not a factor right now. Beverly West, you can see, heading to the locker rooms. West side has already gone inside too for their final preparations before the game. Yeah, I mean, you look at the weather, it's definitely a lot better, especially considering last week against Creighton Prep, it was extremely cold. So, you know, it's definitely a lot better conditions and it will be, it's perfect football weather, really. And let's take a look at some of our pre-game matchups here. Yeah, so first matchup we got obviously one we're covering tonight, Westside and Bellevue West. But we also have Millard West and Grand Island, and I think, Ross, you have a score for that one. Yes, uh, in that game, in the quarterfinals, it was at Buell Stadium. It started at 4 o'clock. The final was Millard West. 31 and Grand Island 7. So Millard West advances to the semifinals where they will play the winner of this game between Westside and Bellevue West. If Westside wins, the game would be here at Phelps Stadium. And also in that bracket. Yeah, you also look at um. We're gonna hear from the national anthem right now. All right, let's go back to our graphics uh, of the playoffs. And there we see right there the last meeting between the two teams back on September 8th. Yeah, you look at Westside, you know, they uh, put up a pretty impressive score, 45 to 12. And you look at some of the stats, you know, 177 passing yards, 185 passing yards for Bell West. But that's not really what you're you're looking at there. The main thing you need to look at is that the, the 256 rushing yards for Westside, and I think that's going to be the, the main key for Westside tonight is can they run the ball well? And for Bellevue West, it's going to be can they stop the run? Yeah, senior quarterback Anthony Rezac was responsible for five touchdowns, throwing for three and running for two in that game. He connected on touchdown passes of 15, 17, and 40 yards. He also scored on runs of one, but he also had a 79-yarder, the longest run of the season. He threw for 141 yards, rushed for 100 yards, and John Maz Ross also rushed for 113 yards on 11 carries. The big distance in between the two teams. Westside outgained Bellevue West offensively 433 to 246, so that's a huge difference. Yeah, and I think next up, we're gonna take a look at some of Bellevue West offensive stars. We look at Daniel Kalen, he's a Nebraska commit, and he's got 2,234 2, total yards and 19 touchdowns, which is very, very impressive. And his main target is Ben Goodwater. He's got 692 receiving yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, Kalen, number two in Class A in passing. Of course, he's the Nebraska recruit, and he has had a spectacular season. Um, 60% completion percentage. He has thrown five interceptions. He had two last week, but 17 touchdown passes, 19 up to this point right now. And he's also the punter on the team, so he's the most <laughs> valuable player, Danny Kalen. Yeah, that's a really interesting to, uh, thing to see here. And next we're gonna look at some Bellevue West defensive leaders. We have Sheard with 66 tackles, Hader with six and a half sacks, 
and then Keith with three interceptions. Really, really impressive. Yeah, Stanley uh, Hayter is the guy you have to watch tonight. 6.5 sacks, that's second in Class A, uh, and he is a person that you know is gonna try to get the Anthony Rizak tonight. Uh, watch for him, and of course, uh, Caprice Keith, three interceptions, but also, uh, they've also got McMorris back there and also uh, Danon Hall. Yeah, next up we're going to switch gears and go to West Side. We've got the dynamic duo for West Side, Anthony Rizak with 2,528 total yards and 34 total touchdowns, Ross. That is unbelievable. And then you look at his main target, Caleb Benning, 454 receiving yards and six touchdowns. Yeah, Anthony Rizak, third in Class A in passing, but he's also uh, a good runner. He's 13th in Class A in rushing, averages over 10.9 yards a carry. That's amazing, and he's number one in Class A in total offense, 252 yards a game. But, of course, Caleb Benning, a two-way player, uh, plays offense and defense, and he is kind of the secret weapon for West Side. He does it all for the Warriors. Yeah, speaking of Caleb Benning, we're actually going to see him again on this next slide for West Side's defensive letter leaders. You obviously have Bo Ryan with 59 tackles, R.J. Eckhart with seven sacks, and Caleb Benning with five interceptions leads the team. He is unbelievable on both sides of the ball. Yeah, Bo Ryan, uh, the linebacker, he kind of leads this defense, and he leads the team in tackles with 59. But get this, 15 of those tackles are for losses, so he is a most valuable player for this defense, and R.J. Eckhart, you know, he, earlier this season, Caleb Benny handed the ball off to him for a touchdown to give him a little bit of recognition, but R.J. is second in Class A in sacks with seven uh, losses of 38 yards, so he's going to get in the backfield. Of course, Caleb Benning, he also is a player to watch on defense, not just offense. He's number one in Class A with five interceptions. He is a tough guy to beat, but he's going to have... The work cut out for him tonight. He's facing two of the best receivers in the state, uh, Danon Hall and McMorris, and those two guys are going to Nebraska. So we've got three Huskers going against <laughs> each other. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a really interesting matchup. And now we're just going to kind of take a look at some of the offensive tendencies for both of these teams. Westside actually, doesn't, they do not pass a lot. Only 34.9% per, of their plays are passing plays, while Bellevue West has 55.2% passing of their plays are passing and you can kind of see that in the yards yeah in the passing yardage uh anthony rizak has four really good receivers to pass to none of them are in the top 10 but they're all very talented caleb benning is 12th in class a in receiving with 33 catches then number 17 in class a is keenan cotton with 19 yards a catch he catches a lot of long passes and a lot of yardage after the catch then you've got Christian Jones and Trevor Spady. Yeah, and speaking of, I mean, guys who like to catch the long ball, you also look at Christian Jones as well. He's averaging 24.3 uh, receiving yards per catch, and that's really impressive. Absolutely. <laughs> I think we're getting ready here. I think we're actually, I think we'll take a break here as we wait for Westside to uh, make their tunnel walk. Yeah, so stay tuned, everybody. Uh, Westside's about ready to come on the field.
Welcome back to Phelps Field, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We are still here waiting for Westside to make their appearance. But me and Rost will just kind of talk about the game before it starts here. Well, this is such an important game for Westside. I mean, they're looking to become only the second team to make it to the state championship finals in Memorial Stadium. Creighton Prep did it in the late 80s from 1985 to 1989. They went five years in a row, and Westside's been to the last four uh, state championships. Uh, they've won two of them, and they've lost two. And first of all, they have to get past this hurdle tonight against uh, Bellevue West. And uh, Bellevue West, uh, when they uh, played in the tournament uh, in the playoffs, in the first round, they defeated Creighton, or excuse me, the number eight seed, Papillion La Vista, 48 to 34. Uh, in that game, uh, quarterback Danny Kalen struggled in the first half. He had two interceptions and lost a fumble. The Thunderbirds, um, however, led at halftime. Then Bellevue West exploded for 21 points in the third quarter and really kind of pounded Papillion La Vista the rest of the way. Uh, C.J. Goff. He scored on a nine yard run to make it 28 to 20. Then Kalen passed 75 yards to Isaiah McMorris for a touchdown. And then get this, McMorris came back on defense and got an interception, returned at 73 yards for a touchdown. So what was really a close game, 21-20, ended up being uh, kind of almost a blowout there, 48-34. They were ahead 42 to 20. So uh, Bellevue West, they're an explosive team they can really come out and make a threat. Well, the officials are starting to come out on the field and it looks like uh, Westside should be coming up pretty soon. We'll keep an eye on it right now. You can see some fans still walking into the stadium. The Westside marching band is not here at Phelps Field. They are at Pinnacle Bank Arena for the semifinals of the state volleyball tournament. And in that match, uh, Papillion is facing West Side. Papillion had the big upset, the number eight seed over the number one seed, Papio South. Well, they continue to roll. They are up 2-0 on West Side right now. The score of the first set was 25 for Papillion and 20 for West Side. And then in the second set, it was Papillion 25 and West Side 16. So, the Monarchs are up 2-0 in that semifinal match at Pinnacle Bank Arena. We'll try to get a final for you there. But uh, there's a lot of West Side students down there for the match. Started at 5 o'clock, but was scheduled then, but it really didn't get going until about 5.30. So there's you see the West Side coaching staff coming on the field. Uh, the players will come out momentarily. They'll have a video, uh, kind of a hype video that they have when they come out on the field. Yeah, I mean, you look at West Side. This is going to be a fun game. You know, you talked about how be how explosive Bell West is, and I think you also have to look at how good West Side's defense is as well. They've played phenomenally the whole year. They're only giving up about four points per game, and it's it's really really impressive. So it's going to be kind of one of the two is going to have to break. Either West Side's defense is going to give up a lot of points, or Bellevue West is not going to score many points. They're going to be a team to watch on offense. I'm telling you tonight. This could be a real show between two of the best quarterbacks in the state, Danny Kalen and Anthony Rizak. I mean, uh, University of Nebraska, they chose Danny Kalen. He had committed to Missouri. Then uh, he decommitted and Nebraska picked him up. Anthony Rizak has not gotten that much attention from the college recruiters. He's made trips um, to Kansas. He's been to Notre Dame where he got a preferred walk-on offer. Um, but uh, this is going to be an interesting matchup tonight between the two quarterbacks. And you can see the pregame video right now. The team's coming out. And so the Warriors will come out right after that video.
and the Warriors should be coming out of the locker room momentarily. Uh, they'll have a big uh, entrance here into Phelps Field, and if we can get a shot there of the uh, West Side Banner down there near the goal line, and you'll see the Warriors march then and uh, break the signage there, and uh, they're very pumped up for this game against Bellevue West. Yeah, it's gonna be a really, really fun matchup. As you can see, Westside is now making their way out of these sports stores, as we like to call them here at Westside. They are in the red uniforms, white helmets, white pants. That'll be easy to recognize, much better than their black jerseys. <laughs> I'm telling you, from up here at the top of the Westside field, uh, that's always kind of tough to see. West side is led, looks like, by Anthony Rizak, Bo Ryan, Kayla Benning, those top performers we talked about, and there's Coach Paul Lamangi in the front of the players walking them out. And there are the West Side Warriors as they barge through the, <laughs> the paper and they will make their way to the midfield logo and <laughs> kind of get pumped up for this game. It's going to be a really fun one here, Ross. I'll tell you what, that's a great entrance for this team. They got the hype video, the light show here at Phelps Field. Uh, and it's a great environment here at the stadium. And now Bellevue West has just entered the field. And they're pumped up for this one. They're trying to stay alive in this uh, playoff tournament. And I'm telling you, the Thunderbirds, so talented. They got some superstars on their team. They come into this matchup with a seven and three record, but that's kind of misleading. They had some injuries earlier in the season and they lost uh, to Westside 45 to 12 in that first meeting, but they had some injuries uh, in that matchup and uh, Dayton Hall went out of the game and uh, it's, it, I think they're at full strength this time. Yeah, really impressive. Both of these teams, super, super, super impressive. And you know, you kind of got to look ahead also, whoever wins this game will play Millard West. And Millard West is a really, really talented team. They played a very close matchup with Millard South earlier in the year. So definitely not an easy road ahead for either of these teams. Yeah, this would be, uh, a battle of the offenses, I think. Uh, Bellevue West, if they have a weak point, it is their defense. Uh, they've had a lot of points scored against them. And Westside's defense is one of the best, if not the best in the in Class A in the state of Nebraska. And very few touchdowns have been made against Westside's number one defense, only three this season. So it'll be, Will, it'll be Bellevue West, um, as you look at the field, It'll be Bellevue West kicking off to west side. Bellevue West will be kicking from the north side of the field. West side will be receiving to the left of your screen on the south side of the field. There's not much wind, won't be a factor in this matchup tonight. Yeah, and if you look at the uh, <laughs> the returners, it's uh, Keenan Cotton and Kayla Benning, both very dangerous, very, very fast, especially Kayla Benning's already returned one. And here we are, kicks away. That one will be picked up. It'll be returned, and it's taken up to about the 37-yard line by Kayla Benning. So a great, great starting field position here for Westside. That's what they needed to do, good field position, and look for Westside to probably run the ball to kind of set the tone here in the first quarter. They like to go with Jamez Ross to start it off. Yeah, Jamez Ross is one of the best running backs in the state. He's got over 1,000 yards and over 10 touchdowns. He really is something special. Anthony Rizak's in the pistol. Shot, snap back, handoff, Jamez Ross. He'll take it up the middle, and he'll get the ball to about the 41, and then he is tackled by Bellevue West. Looked like Keith, the safety, was in there for the tackle. Yeah, it was a nice little up-the-middle run between the tackles for West Side. Let's give you that offensive line for West Side. It's Brock Regner, Owen James, Jackson Wing, Aaron Cardinale, and Connor Wade in that offensive line. Shotgun here for Anthony Rizak. Snap back. 
It's a handoff again. Jamez Ross up the middle, and he is going to be swallowed up at about the 43, 44 yard line. So it'll be around third down and maybe two yards. Well, this is kind of the formula that uh, Westside likes to have, kind of uh, test their linemen up front in the trenches, see who can uh, win it up there, and that's what they like to do. Anthony Rizak in the shotgun again. They have a fullback in. Andrew Nielsen is in the game. Snap back to Rizak. He hands it off again. It's Jamez Ross, and he is stuffed. He is absolutely stuffed by Bellevue West defense. It was. It looks like it was Keith, the safety, who got up in there and made that tackle. Well, what a surprise. Westside stopped on their opening drive of the game. Uh, not even close. It was third and three. There was no gain on that possession. And Bellevue West will receive here, and they'll be back on about the 20-yard line. It'll be Will Bowerly to punt. Yeah, Will Bowerly is a great punter. I also want to mention that in on that tackle was also Hader. We talked about him earlier, and the punt is away. And they are going to let it roll. It's a good bounce for Westside, and it'll be down inside the 20-yard line. So a good punt for Westside, and Bellevue West is going to have questionable field position to start their drive. Well, what a gain of confidence for Bellevue West to stop the Westside on the opening drive. They kept the ball on the ground with three runs to jo with Jamez Ross, and Bellevue West was there to stop it. Yeah, and you look at Bellevue West, their running back is also very impressive. C.J. Goff, he's got over 800 yards and a multitude of touchdowns. Really, really impressive running back for them. Snap back, it's a handoff, and it is swallowed up. R.J. Eckhart is back there to make that tackle for loss and nowhere to go for Goff. And let me tell you about that defensive line for Westside. Defensive end, R.J. Eckhart. Number 11, number 50, the nose guard, Cam Bell. And then you've got the defensive end, John Kell Osler. They have been tremendous this season. They're going to try to stop this Thunderbird offense. Shotgun for Kalen. Goff on his left. Snap back, it's a throw. And it's batted down at the line, incomplete. Nothing going here for Bellevue West to start their drive. I think it was R.J. Eckhart who got in there and put a hand on it deflected the pass and it looked like it almost could have been intercepted but uh, nothing there and Westside will now f come up with a third down and try to stop this Bellevue West offense look for Danny Kalen to make his first pass of the game right here yeah intended target there was Whaley number 18 here's Kalen in the sh shotgun he'll snap it it's a little jump as it's picked off intercepted Westside intercepted and taken back to the 10 yard line and Kalen throws his first pick already, Ross. Yeah, it looked like it was Teddy Rezac, the Notre Dame recruit on that interception, kind of just jumped the receiver right there and made the pick and took it down to the about the 12 yard line. That is huge, Ross. This West Side offense just went three and out and now they have the ball inside the 10 yard line. What a major turn of events. It's Rezac in the shotgun once again. Jamez Ross on his left. He will switch sides in motion. Christian Jones, they're going to go two tight ends. Snap back. It's a handoff. Jamez Ross, and he is still stuffed. Nothing going there for Westside. Yeah, Westside's kind of struggled with their ground game here to start it, but uh, they might have to open it up a little and put the ball in the air to get in the end zone. Yeah, Rizak is a good thrower. He's throwing, he has a completion percentage of 73%, so they definitely can go to the air. Rizak's in the shotgun again. Jamez Ross on his right. Snap back. He'll throw. He's looking. Looking end zone. Oh, incomplete. He was looking for Kayla Benning, unable to complete that one. And it will be third down. Well, west side looking to the air to the end zone. Bellevue West kind of plugging it up up the middle and look for maybe a Christian Jones on this. They've been successful down at the end zone with him or maybe Caleb Benning. Rezac once again in shotgun. Expect this one to be a throw, if not a quarterback run. Snap back, Rezac. He'll run it up the middle. Touchdown, Westside. Rezac. 
Anthony Rizak takes it in for a touchdown. And what a game he is about to have, I'm telling you. A lot of people debate, like, who's the best quarterback in the state? Is it Kalen or is it Anthony Rizak? And he just made a statement there, interception by Kalen, and Rizak scores the touchdown. Yeah, that's a great, great run from Rizak. Kick is up and good by Will Bowerly. Westside will take an early 7-0 lead here after the interception from Danny Kalen. Big time for Westside to score early here. That's his 12th rushing touchdown of the season. And I'm telling you, he had a two touchdown runs against the Thunderbirds earlier in the season in the first matchup. We'll go to a break right now, and we'll come back with more first quarter action after this timeout. Welcome back here at Phelps Field. We are ready for the kickoff here. Will Bowerly will send it deep. He's got them uh, some, he's one of the best kickers in the state. He's got a lot of touchbacks. Looks like Keith is back to return this one for Bellevue West. That one will be returned at the one yard line. Here comes Keith. Keith down the left side of the field and he is tackled immediately before the 20. What a great job by the West Side special teams to get up there and make that tackle. That was a wonderful coverage there by the Warriors. They really swarmed the kickoff and kind of nailed it back down there inside the 20, down to the 19 yard line. So great special teams were there by the Warriors. Yeah, and we'll look at Danny Kalen coming back out. Looks like he's gonna be an empty here for the first play, maybe a pass, so we'll have to see he's in the shotgun. Kalen will take the snap, he'll throw it, it's a little screen and it is incomplete it was almost intercepted there ross it looked like <laughs> <laughs> i'm telling you i think kaylin's just a little shaky right now after throwing that first pass and it was an interception and that was was way high over to the far side of this of the field and uh, i think it's it's just kind of you know you throw that first interception it just hurts your confidence yeah danny kaylin back in the shock and again golf on his left He'll take the snap, he's gonna throw it again. Here's Danny Kalen, he's looking over the middle and it's broken up. He was looking for McMorris, it was a great defensive play. It looked like Caleb Benning there, the safety, once again making an amazing play for Westside. Well, McMorris is a Nebraska recruit and Caleb Benning's a Nebraska recruit. It was two future Huskers going against each other there and uh, Caleb Benning won that first matchup between the two. Yeah, and it's going to be another third and long for Bellevue West here. Not great. <laughs> Not a great start here for Bellevue West. Kalen's in the shotgun. Goff on his left once again. He'll take the snap. He's going to roll out. He's going to look. He's going to throw. And he's got a man wide open. Davon Hall. Davon Hall will take it down to the 15-yard line, and that is exactly the play Bellevue West needed. And he beat Preston Okafor on that play. Kalen just kind of rolled out to his left, gave uh, the receiver plenty of time down the field. Hall got into the open and 55 yards on that play and they go all the way down to the 15 yard line. So Bellevue West right back in it, folks. Yeah, what a huge play for Bellevue West. They get to a third and long and an amazing play by Davon Hall and Danny Kalen. And Danny Kalen's in the shotgun again with Goff on his right. He'll look to throw. It's a screen pass and oh, dropped. It's not going to be complete. He would have been swallowed up immediately anyway, but incomplete for Kalen. Well, they had single coverage over there on the far side of the field. If they had made the catch, it would have been really tough for the Warriors to make a play there. Uh, but it was incomplete. Brings up now second down and 10 yards to go. Second down and 10. So here we go, second and 10, Kalen and Goff, in the, they were in the pistol, they moved to the shotgun. 
Goff on his right. Kalen will take the snap, and it's going to be a handoff. Or no, it's kept by Kalen, it looks like, and he's going to get about two yards. So a minimal gain, and it'll be third down again. Yeah, Danny Kalen does not run the ball that much. He's only got 134 rushing yards this season, and uh, that is not the strength of their team. Kalen's, their strength is Kalen's arm. Yeah, so and I, this brings up third down and seven. This is pretty much a passing situation. Kalen in the shotgun. It's going to be kept again. There goes Kalen up the middle, and he'll get it down to about the seven. I don't believe that's going to be enough, though. It's going to be probably about four yards short. So they'll go for it because their, their kicking is not the best part of their team. Yeah, so fourth and four here. Or fourth and three, sorry. You would expect probably a pass here from Kalen. He's in the empty, so almost guaranteed unless it's a quarterback draw. Here's Kalen in the shotgun. They could also try and draw him off sides. They don't. They snap it. They're looking incomplete. Great coverage by Westside, and it is a turnover on downs for Bellevue West. Bellevue West was looking for a flag in the end zone. The officials, it's a no call. No pass interference, and Westside takes over at their own eight yard line right now. Big stop by the Warrior defense. Huge stop by Westside. After that giant Davon Hall pass, they get a good four down stop, and they are right back on offense here. The Royers got to be careful. No turnovers here deep in their own territory. Rezac is in the shotgun with Jamez Ross on his right. Snap back, it's gonna be a handoff Ross, and there is nowhere for him to go. Absolutely swallowed up. I'm telling you, Bellevue West has come to play in the trenches. They have stopped Westside's running game so far in this first quarter. Westside has really struggled. The only way they've done it is through the air and a run by Anthony Rezac, which was the difference on that uh, after that interception. So. Uh, Bellevue West doing a good job up front. By the way, Evans on that tackle. Anthony Rezac in the shotgun here. Jamez Ross again on his right. Snap back to Anthony Rezac. It's going to be kept by Anthony Rezac. There goes Anthony Rezac. Anthony Rezac down the sideline. He might not be caught, and he will not be caught. Anthony Rezac, touchdown west side. A 92-yard run by Anthony Rezac. My goodness, but that's the wait. longest run of his career. He had a 79 yarder, but guess what folks? They're gonna call it back. Oh, that's a huge killer for Westside, holding on the offense. And this 92 yard run is going to be brought back pretty much to the inside the 10-ish. That is an unbelievable break. That is a huge break for Bellevue West. I'm telling you, it was off to the races for Anthony Rezac down the near sign lines, 92 yards, but the holding call, the flag came down at about the 15 yard line. And uh, tough break for the Warriors there, but man, what a run there. It'll be second down and 10 from the nine yard line. Anthony Rezac and Jamez Ross in the pistol. We'll see what they can do here after that one. It's going to be a pass from Rezac. He'll look deep, and it's caught! It's caught! A huge catch by Caleb Benning. Once again, Caleb Benning making plays on both sides of the ball. 31-yard pass there for Caleb Benning. Just a great job over the middle. That's his favorite receiver. He leads the Warriors in receptions and he is a great target to have. That was a great job by Caleb Benning, just getting separation, and Westside is going to have a <laughs> great first down. Here we go, Anthony Rezac once again in the shotgun. Jamez Ross on his right, or left, sorry. It's gonna be a handoff to Ross. Ross will take it to the outside, and he will get it up to about the 45, a pretty decent gain on first down. And a little bit of some chippiness going down, down there in the pile by both teams. Emotions a little high right now, but that was a good run, probably the best run by Jamez Ross in this game so far. Yeah, I've got to say, Bellevue, you have to hand it to Bellevue West so far. Their defense has not played terrible other than that 92-yard breakaway, but that one did get called back. 
Anthony Rizak in the shotgun here once again. And he'll look to the sideline to get a new play call. Andrew Nielsen's in the backfield as a fullback. Jamez Ross on his right. Snap back. Anthony Rizak will throw. It's a screen pass. Looks like Keenan Cotton's got it. Keenan Cotton will take it to around the 46 of Bellevue West in a good gain. First down West Side. Those quick passes are always a good gainer for this West Side offense. You throw it out to the flat, a very safe pass, and the receiver does the rest of the work, gets a lot of yardage, and that has been a successful play all season for the Warriors. Some substitutions for West Side right now. Christian Jones is in the game. He'll, yeah. be, he'll be on the left side at the tight end spot. Yeah, when you see Christian Jones, expect a deep pass maybe. Here's Rezac, he'll look. And many Bellevue West players getting into the backfield there. And it looks like the ball came out. And it did. Bellevue West recovers it. And it, a huge turnover by West Side. Yeah, Anthony Rezac was trying to get some extra yards there. And they knocked the ball loose. And Bellevue West takes over at midfield. And we'll see if this West Side defense can do what they did on the last possession and stop the Thunderbirds. I mean, it's really amazing how quickly a drive can turn there, Ross. I mean, you go from a 92-yard touchdown run to a fumble at the 50-yard line. Shotgun for Kalen. It's going to be a handoff and stuffed immediately by that west side defensive line. There was absolutely nowhere for Goff to go there. Yeah, Eckhart, Bell, and Osler right there in the middle. And, of course, you've got Bo Ryan, leading them from the linebacker spot. So nothing up the middle there for the Thunderbirds. But Aiden, I want to tell you, turnovers is a great equalizer. If you, you can have the best offense uh, on the field, but if you turn the ball over every time, it's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt you bad. Yeah, we've already seen it hurt Bellevue West. Now, will it hurt West Side is the question we'll have to see here. Kalen is, in the, is empty. No one in the backfield. Kalen's going to look to throw. He's going to throw. Throw it, it's caught by Davon. Oh, no, incomplete. No, I think he, oh, he caught it. it. I think he got it. He caught it at around the 40. And that is going to be very close to a first down, if not a first down. But I think there is a flag on the play, and it's against Bellevue West, which will nullify the reception by Hall. So. Yeah, that's unfortunate for Bellevue. We've seen a lot of self-inflicted mistakes already here, Ross. Two turnovers, one on both teams, and we've seen some crucial penalties on each team. So second and 21 for Bellevue West right now. Second and 21. Kalen in the empty once again. It's going to be a pitch out to the right, left, and oh, a massive hit up the middle. That was Teddy Rezac making that hit. And it's going to be up to about the 49-yard line for Bellevue West. That's what Notre Dame liked so much about Teddy Rezac was his tackling. Uh, one of the top tacklers on this West Side team, he just cut down the runner there up the middle when he tried to cut up field. And it looks like we've got an injury down on the field at about the 38-yard line. That's Teddy Rezac, folks, the Notre Dame recruit we were just talking about. And he made a hit on that tackle, and it looks like he shook up. Yeah, that's uh, if this, you know, you always got to hope that there's these injuries are, you know, hopefully nothing too bad, and we'll hope Teddy Rezac's okay, and especially well, they're Westside. looking at his helmet right now, and I wonder if uh, the helmet got jarred or something, but the equipment manager and it looked like the trainer too were out there working on his helmet, but he walked off the field easily. Yeah, and when your helmet does come off, you are you are supposed to come off the field for one play. So a new safety in here that could be key for Bellevue West. Yeah, this would be a good time for them to challenge West Side downfield. Snap back, Kalen. Kalen is blown up immediately. Wow, what a play from West Side. That looks like Bo Ryan, Ross. <laughs> That's why he leads the team in tackles, Bo Ryan. He's so good, and I'm telling you, he's got 16 tackles for losses. And that's the reason why, number 42. Yeah, Bo Ryan, not the only one in on that sack, though. There was a couple other defensive linemen there, so just a huge play for Westside. And they're going to have to, uh, Bellevue West is going to have to punt. It looked like Nick England was also in there on that tackle. So Bellevue West will look to punt here. Caleb Benning back to return. 
He'll catch it. Caleb Benning will return it. And good coverage by Bellevue West. He'll get it up to about the 26-27, but good coverage to not let him get any more. And it looks like a few words down there on the field, too, uh, by both teams. Uh, West side leading seven to nothing, but uh, kind of shaky start for both teams. West side fumble. Bellevue West has thrown an interception, uh, but West side capitalized off their interception and scored a touchdown on a run by Anthony Rezac from 12 yards out at 8:37 to take a seven to nothing lead. Yeah, 130 left in this quarter, so West side might get one more drive in before the end of the first. Anthony Rezac in the shotgun once again. He'll take the snap. He'll hand it off. Jamez Ross miss, breaks a tackle. There goes Jamez Ross. What a move by Jamez Ross. And he's pushed out of bounds finally by Isaiah McMorris. What a run by Jamez Ross right there. Jamez Ross finally breaks free. He's been kind of held by this Bellevue West defense so far in this matchup. But there he gets a nice run from the 27 yard line down to the 40 of Bellevue West, so a 37 yard, 33 yard run. Shotgun once again, Jamez Ross on his left. It's gonna be another handoff, Jamez Ross up the middle. Jamez Ross making some good, good pushes and he'll get about five or six yards there. Well, I think this West side offensive line is starting to take control, starting to wear down this Bellevue West defense. They're getting some yardage now. Uh, on these running plays that they didn't get at the start of the game. Yeah, big time for Westside if they can really get this run game going. Once again, Rezac in the shotgun. Rezac's going to look to throw. It's a quick pass, and it's caught by Caleb Benning. Caleb Benning will take it, and Caleb Benning will be pushed out of bounds at about the 22-yard line. And a little pushing going on down near the west side sideline between Bellevue West and Westside. The officials kind of break it up, but it looked like the Bellevue West player was pulling Benning off the field. Still but it gets him down to the 23 yard line. Still 49 seconds left in the quarter. Rezac will take the snap. He's gonna look to throw another quick pass. That one's caught by Benning again, and he'll be taken out at around the 15, or sorry, around the 13. Good catch and run for Caleb Benning right there. Well, Benning's being challenged over there uh, by the west side, by the Bellevue West secondary, but he's making some plays. Snap back, they're gonna run the same play again and it's incomplete. I mean, don't, <laughs> I guess keep running it until it, it fails and it fails there unfortunately, but. Well, I think Caleb Benning and Davon Hall, the two Nebraska recruits are going at each other right now. There you see number five, Hall, and Benning number one, they're challenging each other. Snapback Rezac, he'll take it himself. Rezac up the middle, and he will, oh, and a hit after the play there. What an interesting thing to see, but it'll be a quarterback keeper for Rezac, and he'll take it up for a first down. You know, this this drive started back on the uh, nine yard line for Westside, and they are really, or about the 25 yard line after the punt by, returned by Caleb Benning, and they have driven all the way downfield. In the shotgun again, around 20 seconds left in the quarter here. See if Westside decides to run another play. Snap back. It'll be a keeper for Rezac again, and he'll get about two or three yards there. Not much going there for Rezac. A good chunk gain, but... And it looks like we are gonna actually take this to the end of the first quarter. So we will take a break here on WTV and we will be back with you for second quarter coverage.
Welcome back to Phelps Field here. It is the start of the second quarter. Westside is up 7-0, and they are driving. It's second and goal for the Warriors at about the Bellevue West 7. Anthony Rizak in the shotgun. Jamez Ross on his right. Snap back. It'll be a handoff and a touchdown. Touchdown, Westside. Jamez Ross up the middle for a Westside touchdown. Great play to open the second quarter for the Warriors. An eight yard run by Jamez Ross. And he has had quite the season, has rushed for over a thousand yards. And he gives Westside a 13 to nothing lead. Hourly is on for the extra point. Snaps good, holds good, kick is good. 14-0 here at Phelps Field. Westside taking a pretty good lead here in the second quarter. And we do have a final from the state volleyball tournament in Lincoln. Uh, Papillion swept the Warriors in three straight sets. They won the final set. The Monarchs did 25-20. So Westside's volleyball season comes to an end. And Papillion La Vista, who upset Papio South in the opening round, heads to the state championship match at seven o'clock on Saturday night at the Devaney Center. We'll go to a break right now on Warrior Television. We'll be back after this timeout. Welcome back here to Phelps Field. We are ready for the kickoff. It's 14-0 here in the second quarter. Will Bowerly will send us away here. Bowerly with the kick, and it's boomed away. And it will be another touchback for Will Bowerly. You know, that's great that Will Bowerly can get those touchbacks because Bellevue West has two guys that can take it all the way back, Isaiah McMorris and Davon Hall, who are back there for the kickoff returns, and you don't want to have that happen. So Bellevue West will take over at the 20-yard line. Yeah, two guys that can definitely make a difference. Kalen here, Goff in the backfield as well, looking for the play in the shotgun with Goff on his right. Snap back, it's a little toss to Goff, and he'll find a little bit of room for about a four-yard pickup there. So not a bad gain on first down for Bellevue West. Yeah, Bo Ryan kind of shot through there, just missed the tackle, and then Bellevue West got a few yards on that play, and that'll bring up second down at about five. Yeah, Bellevue West has faced a lot of long-distance situations, so getting these kind of little chunk plays will really help them in the long run. Kalen in the shotgun once again. Snap back, handoff Goff again, and he swallowed up. It looks like Christian Jones was the first one to get there. Great tackle there by Christian Jones. And we'll get to see right now. Kalen looks like he's going to have to pass here. Yeah, five yards. Definitely not a normal running situation, so we'll probably see a pass here from Kalen. Kalen in the shotgun. Goff on his left. Look for Goodwater, number 15. That is their leading receiver. Snap back, he'll look, <laughs> he'll roll out and he'll throw a pass. That's Davon Hall. Oh, and he breaks a tackle. Oh no, Davon Hall down the sideline up to the 45. Westside had him in the backfield, but they missed the tackle. Yeah, it was like a broken play that uh, Kalen went to his left and then Westside almost nailed him in the backfield and he threw a pass to Hall, who was just kind of at the line of scrimmage and caught the ball, and there was nobody from West Side over there to make the play, and now they've crossed midfield to the 49. Broken plays work sometimes. Yeah, Davon Hall's definitely not a guy you want to let get in open space. Kalen is in the shotgun once again, in motion. Looks like Whaley snapped back, and there will be a, looks like a flag. Oh, nope, it will be a timeout for the Thunderbirds. 
Well, I think they, the clock was running out and uh, the, the coaching staff over there on the far side of the field from Bellevue West didn't want the penalty, so they called timeout. Yeah, and uh, with that timeout, we are also going to take a break. So we will be back for the rest of Bellevue West Drive after this. Welcome back here to Phelps Field. We are here for the rest of Bellevue West drive in the second quarter. It's 14-0 Westside. Hall's in the shotgun. Goff on his right. Snap back. It's a handoff to Goff again, and he is immediately stuffed in uh, maybe a gain of one, maybe back to the line of scrimmage there for Goff. R.J. Eckhart on the tackle for the Warriors. That defensive line, very tough. Not going to let the Thunderbirds get too much distance on the ground. Yeah, so it was a two-yard pickup, so it'll be second down and eight for the Thunderbirds here. Kalen will go in, looks like the pistol. Nope, never mind. Goff will move over to the right. Snap back, Kalen's going to look. He's going to throw it deep. He's looking, oh! Incomplete, he was looking for, it looks like Isaiah McMorris, and he was unable to get him. Jordan Hurst on the coverage there. It looked like uh, the fans wanted uh, offensive pass interference on the play, and it looked like Hurst got kind of pushed out of the way, but uh, no flag on the play by either team. So that'll bring up third down and eight. So another passing situation here for Bellevue West. They'll be in the shotgun again. Goff on Kalen's right. Snap back Kalen. He will throw it. It's a little out route, and it's incomplete. Looked like he was looking for Whaley there. So it'll be fourth down again here for Bellevue West. And it looks like they might be going for this. Well, this is going to be an offensive game tonight. A lot of points are going to be scored, and uh, this is what Bellevue West needs to do. Big play here in the game. Danny Kalen under center, fourth and eight. They'll empty out the backfield. They'll go five wide here for Bellevue West. Kalen gets the snap. He's going to look over the middle, and it's caught. It is caught. That'll be a First down, Bellevue West. Big time catch right there. Yeah, Isaiah McMorris just kind of cut over the middle and Caleb found him down at the 34 yard line. Just a crossing pattern over the middle part of the field and they get the first down on fourth down. Wow, that was a big play. Huge play for Bellevue West, especially considering if they didn't get it, Westside would have had great field position. Snap back to Kalen, he'll look to throw again and he's blown up! Oh, wow, what a play by Westside. John Quell Osler into the backfield. <laughs> I'm telling you what, he had an open door to the backfield, rushed in. Kalen didn't have a chance, tried to look at his receivers, and he just got nailed by John Quell Osler. It'll be second down and 18 now after that sack. So Bellevue West is going to have to look to pass here, looking maybe for... Hall, McMorris, or Goodwater. Goodwater has not caught a ball yet. It's been mostly McMorris and Hall. Snap back, and it's just a little handoff. Up the middle, not a bad gain for Goff, though. He'll get back to about the original line of scrimmage, so it'll be a third and around nine or ten. Just a nice little play up the middle, an iso play. Goff on a little daylight up the middle there. But still, it's third down and nine. Yeah, passing situation here. And I wouldn't be surprised, Ross, if they get into another fourth down here, they go for it again. They got to get down to the 24-yard line. 
Halen in the shotgun, Goff on his left. Whaley in motion, snap back, Kalen. He'll look over the middle, it's incomplete. It looked like he was looking for Goodwater there and he is, it's a little low for Goodwater. It is incomplete, fourth down and nine. Good play by the Warriors, good defense. Just a drop pass right there. Kalen was right on the money. Yeah, and they're gonna go for it again here, Ross. Obviously, this is the right decision. You're down 14 nothing. You gotta score here. Well, it, it's good. You got two of the best offenses in the state, and uh, Bellevue West just has to keep trying. And they were successful the last time on fourth down. This time they gotta get at least nine yards. Snap back, Kalen. He will look, and it's gonna be. It looks like a maybe a pre-snap penalty. It's gonna be a false start on Bellevue West. That is not what you're looking for on a fourth and nine. Okay, that's gonna bring up now fourth down and 14 yards to go. And, and that'll put the ball on the 38 yard line of West Side. I've gotta think that the Warriors are probably gonna blitz this time. I could just see it. Look for Christian Jones on the blitz number eight. Yeah, Westside likes to bring a lot of linebackers. We'll see if they do it here. Kalen in the shotgun, he'll snap back. Low snap, he's looking deep, he'll fire, and it's caught, it's caught! Good water! Oh, the ball's out! And it will be down at around the five yard line. It looked like the ball came the out. The ball came out, but I think it bounced out of bounds, but they're going with a hurry up offense here. Bellevue West down on the six yard line, trying to get something going here and to pull within, get on the scoreboard and pull within seven. What a huge fourth down conversion again, Ross, the second of this of this drive. Both of them have been over a good amount. It's gonna be Kalen, he'll take it himself. Kalen up the middle and he'll go out of bounds at about the one or two yard line. Good run by Kalen. Got about four yards on the play. Kalen's a big player, he's, he's about 6'3", six, 6'4", six, and he's a, he's, a, he's a solid runner. Doesn't run a lot, but he's solid. Looks like Kalen's gonna be in the empty here, maybe a quarterback draw, we'll have to see here. Kalen will take it up the middle, and he does not get it. Ball's out! Ball is out! And it's Westside's ball. A huge turnover from Bellevue West. And just cannot have it if you're Bellevue West. A huge, huge turnover there. A costly turnover for Bellevue West. They threw an interception in the first quarter, deep in their own territory by Kalen. And that time, Bellevue West went right up the middle, but the ball got stripped loose. And now Westside has the ball on their own one yard line. Boy. What a blow for the Thunderbirds there. Looks like they're gonna punch it in and they fumble the ball. Yeah, that's a costly turnover for Bellevue West. They really needed to score there to get back in this game. Anthony Rezak's in the shotgun. Handoff, Jamez Ross up the middle. Ross will take it for a good gain. He'll get about six or seven there, so really no hopes of a safety anymore for Bellevue West. And everybody's in the pile trying to strip the ball loose and. Uh, you got to know that uh, Bellevue West is just frustrated right now with that golden opportunity right there to pull within seven and get on the scoreboard. Yeah, very unfortunate for Bellevue West. That's two huge turnovers for Westside. Snap back, it's a quick throw. It's caught in the flat, and it will be taken up to about the 12 yard line. Looks like Keenan Cotton on the reception. And that'll be a first down for Westside. They got it up just for the first down out there to about the 12 yard line. They were on the one, so uh, Westside back in business here with the first down. Yeah, it's a huge first down. They just ran a little screen play there. Wide receiver screen, it worked really well. They got about five or six yards. Anthony Rezac in the shotgun once again. Snap back, it's a handoff. There's Jamez Ross. Jamez Ross breaks free. Jamez Ross is tackled at the 20. That's a great gain by Jamez Ross. And if he gets past that one defender, it looks like he might go all the way. There wasn't anybody back there for Bellevue West, but a nice run by Jamez Ross. 
of about eight yards, takes it out to about the 20. That's a great job by Jamez Ross. He has some great moves and he's able to avoid a lot of tackles. He did it once there and he got extra yardage because of it. And the shotgun once again for Rezac. It's gonna be a quick pass, it's caught. That was a dangerous pass. It'll be brought up to about the 25, 26 yard line. So another good gain for Westside. Yeah, that was a dangerous pass over there on the near side of the field. Caleb Benning and Keenan Cotton were over there and it looked like uh, Bellevue West kind of jumped the pass and could have maybe intercepted it, but Westside stepped up there and got the ball. Yeah, huge, would have been huge for Bellevue West if they were able to pick that one off. Anthony Rizak, it's gonna be a handoff Ross again. Ross is stuffed and that's gonna be sheared for Bellevue West, nowhere to go. Yeah, very tough play right there. Uh, for West Side and Bellevue West comes up strong. That'll bring up uh, second down and 10 from the 27 yard line. Good play by the Thunderbird defense. This quarter is going by quick as well. There's only around four and a half minutes left. So if West Side runs the clock, if they manage their time well here, they could bring this one down very, very low. So Bellevue West doesn't get another chance. Snap back to Rezac, he'll throw. Looking, Rezac will fire deep and it's incomplete. Looking for Cotton, that was a beautiful pass breakup by Keith. What a play from Bellevue West safety. Anthony Rezac just kind of double pump, look for Cotton along the sidelines. Cotton averages about uh, 15 yards a catch, so he's a big play receiver. Uh, Rezac looking downfield for that play, just out of his reach, and uh, it'll bring up now third down and 10. A big, big third down here for Bellevue West. They really need a stop here. Anthony Rezac in the shotgun. He'll take the snap. He's going to throw over the middle. Incomplete. And the fans are not happy. He was looking for Christian Jones. And there is a flag on the play. Yeah, I, I saw it from up here. Uh, he, he was down on the ground when the ball was in the air. So that'll be a first down for Westside. Pass interference on Bellevue West, and it'll bring the ball probably up near the 45-yard line. Big first down for the Warriors. They will catch a break there, and Bellevue West is in for a long drive from this West Side team. Big break for the Warriors there. Pass interference call takes it up to the 43, first and 10. Rezac in the shotgun once again. He will throw again. Rezac's looking, he's got a hole, but he's gonna throw it. He's got a wide open man, Christian Jones. He'll walk into the end zone. Touchdown, West Side. A 57-yard pass from Anthony Rezac to Christian Jones for a touchdown. A big play by the Warriors, but we have another flag. A play that has gone for a touchdown, but is it against Bellevue West? That's the question. We will have to see. It was a great job by Rezac. He stepped up into the pocket and actually made it look like he was gonna scramble. Which Here's kind the of call from the official. Ooh. Unsportsmanlike conduct, is that what the, I, I, I think I heard? I believe so. It'll be applied on the kickoff though, so the touchdown will stand. As I was saying, it was a great play by Rizak. He kind of stepped up, acted like he was gonna scramble, confused the DB, threw the ball, Christian Jones wide open. It's a beautiful play from Westside right there. And Will Bowerly will try the point after touchdown here. Will Bowerly setting up for the kick. Snaps good, holds good, kick is up, and it is good. 21-0 here for Westside with 4.09 left in the second quarter. What a big time play by Christian Jones right there. I tell you though, what, Rezac and Jones have teamed up this season for some big plays and they have done a great job. Christian Jones, 24 yards, uh, 24 yards a catch this season. Big play, he's had scored eight touchdowns. 
We're going to take a break, and we'll be back on Warrior Television right after this timeout. Welcome back here to Phelps Field. We are getting ready for the kickoff. It is 21-0, and you may be seeing that Westside is actually lined up further back for this kickoff. That is due to an unsportsmanlike conduct on Westside on the touchdown. So they will be kicking it off further back at about the 25. Here's Bowerly. He will boot it, and it's going to take a bounce. It's going to bounce. They pick it up. They got it. They have to return it now. And stuffed at the six. A huge play for Westside there on special teams. Wow, what a, what a great coverage by the Warriors. That ball bounced about the 20-yard line. And the kickoff return specialist for Bellevue West overran the ball, and they had to go back to the goal line to retrieve it because the ball got away from them. And now Bellevue West will start from their own nine yard line. Yeah, definitely not something you expected, especially after that unsportsmanlike conduct that pushed the kickoff back. But from the nine, Kalen will take the snap. He's gonna roll out. It's gonna be a handoff actually and blown up in the backfield. That is Caleb Benning on the tackle. <laughs> this defensive uh, backfield for Westside is so good in the linebacker spot with Christian Jones, Nick Anglum, Bo Ryan, and Johnny Hurtado. But those defensive backs of Jordan Hurst, Preston Okafor, Rezac, that's Teddy Rezac, and Caleb Benning are so good, and that's why very few teams have scored on this number one defense for Westside. Kalen in the shotgun once again. He'll hand it off and blown up immediately! by Westside's D-line. What a huge play there for Westside. Yeah, they weren't going anywhere on that play, let me tell you. It was uh, John Kel Osler almost threw him down in the end zone right there, but I'll tell you, Westside's defensive front is just having a huge game. They forced some turnovers, uh, really just playing ro great pressure on Danny Kalen so far, and they're really having a good game. But here's a dangerous situation for Bellevue West. Third and 13, and they're on their own six yard line. Yeah, this is a must pass situation for Kalen here after a loss of three on the tackle. Snap back Kalen and whistles blow here. A pre snap penalty. And a delay of game on uh, Bellevue West. That is detrimental. Yeah, that's going to put the ball all the way back to about the three yard line right there and now it's third down and 16. not something you want to see especially with west side they could blitz here and get two points on the scoreboard we'll have to see those snap back it's going to be a quick throw balls out it's picked up they're going to say incomplete they're going to say it was a forward pass he was looking for mcmorris there but that will still bring up fourth down yeah that ball was just thrown over there in the flat incomplete and now Bellevue West has to boot the ball out of their own end zone. That'll be Danny Kalen to punt the ball. Yeah, Danny Kalen on fourth and 16. He will be punting it to Caleb Benning. He's got to get it off first, though. Good block opportunity here for Westside. Snap back to Kalen. Punts away. It's going to be downed at about the 25 yard line. Oh my gosh. 2.29 left in the first half and Westside's got a golden opportunity right here to put some more points on the scoreboard. 21 to nothing right now, but they're in business right now, deep in Bellevue West territory. That kick only went about 20 yards. That was about it. 23 yards yeah. on the punt. 
kind of took a little west side bounce at the end there, but not a great punt from Kalen. So west side will be at the 25, Rizak in the shotgun. Jamez Ross on his right. Rizak will look to throw here. He'll look deep, wide open, touchdown! West side, big time. Huge touchdown for Westside. First play on the drive. Wide open on that play for the Warriors and they score the touchdown. Boy, that was quick. The first play after they get it back and here's Bowerly with the kick. Kick is up and it is good. So it is now 28 nothing Ross. And we are not at halftime yet. There is Still 2.23 left in this second quarter. Definitely more opportunities to put points on the board here. All right, we're gonna take a timeout on Warrior Television. We'll be right back with the last part of the first half right after this timeout. Welcome back here to Phelps Field. Westside has taken a 28 point lead. McMorris and Keith are back to receive this kickoff from Will Bowerly. Bowerly will take his run and he will boot it away. And that is gonna be another touchback for Will Bowerly. So Bellevue West will start it at the 20 yard line. Great play by the West Side offense. Anthony Rizak so far in this game. This has been his game, I'm telling you. He scored the very first touchdown of the game on an 11-yard run in the first quarter, but in the second quarter, he has thrown three touchdown passes. Just amazing. Kalen snap back. It's gonna be a handoff to Goff up the middle, and he's only gonna get about a yard. So it'll be second down and nine here for Bellevue West. We've only got about two minutes and 10 seconds left in this second quarter. So Bellevue West needs to hurry it up here. Now it will be interesting to see if Westside calls a timeout after this play to try to get the ball back one more time before halftime. But look for Paul Lamangi if the Warriors get a good stop here to call a timeout. Kalen in the shotgun once again. In motions, Whaley snap back to Kalen. He's looking over Isaiah McMorris with the catch, and he's just around that first down marker. He will be very, very close. Yeah, only about a yard to go for a first down right there. Be third down and one. We'll have to see what Bellevue West decides to do here. Kalen in the shotgun once again. Goff on his left. Snap back, it's his handoff, but wait, there's a whistle and a flag down on the far side of the field. And it looks like it's going against Bellevue West. Wow, that is unbelievable for Bellevue West. That you go from a third and one situation to third and six, so they're gonna have to probably pass this one here, Ross. Yeah, they're really struggling on offense right now. Bellevue West is kind of out of sorts right now I mean this the turnovers have really shook them up and the interception the fumble on the one yard line Kalen in the shotgun once again Goff on his right snap back to Kalen he will throw it it's a quick pass and it's incomplete oh, oh. oh I'll tell you what that ball popped up in the air and there were four west side players around it none of them could get to it but that could have been another interception. So 
Bellevue West is gonna punt the ball with 57 seconds left here. Fourth down and six. So Westside's gonna have one more opportunity and Caleb Benning is back on his own 44 yard line. 57 seconds to do something with it. Kalen will punt it away and it is gonna roll. Caleb Benning will pick it up. Caleb Benning up to the 45, 50 and he will be blown up at the 48 yard line. Okay, Westside's got a chance here to put some more points on the scoreboard. They have all their timeouts remaining. 49 seconds left. We'll see this hurry up offense by the Warriors. It's gonna be interesting to see what Westside opts to do here. Probably throw the ball. Anthony Rizak has done a great job so far. He's got three passing touchdowns. Probably see Anthony Rizak put this one in the air once again. Rizak looking for a play on the sideline. Yeah, he's got four receivers out there. Three to the far side of the field, one to the near side. Trips on the right. Snap back to Rizak. He'll look to throw. Rizak's looking. He'll look more. Great coverage by the offensive line, and he'll just have to throw that one away. He had about five or six seconds there <laughs> to throw the ball. Uh, yeah, he was back there having uh, dinner back there, just kind of walking around, waiting for somebody to get open, and uh, just kind of looking around at the scenery, and finally he just decided to throw it out of bounds and put it away. But it stops the clock with 41 seconds left. Good coverage there from Bellevue West, though. They do have some very good defensive backs, and Keith, Davon Hall, Isaiah McMorris, they were able to force a throw away there. Rezac snap back. It's going to be a keeper, and Rezac is blown up in the backfield. And that was a nice tackle there by Jules Dadat. Uh, defensive lineman came in there and made the play. Okay, there's timeout on the field. Let's go to a break here on Warrior Television. We'll be right back after this timeout. Welcome back here to Phelps Field. We are at the end of the second quarter almost, and Westside is trying to get one more score in. It is third down and 10. Anthony Rizak in the shotgun. He'll step back. He's going to throw over the middle. It's caught by Jamez Ross. Jamez Ross trying to make a move, but it's a great tackle there. Amazing tackle by Bellevue West. And Westside only needs about three more yards for a first down, and they'll go for it here. And Westside will take a timeout. We're going to keep it here and just talk about how Westside has played here. Just 14 seconds left. They'll, it's third down and about, or no, four, it'll be fourth down and about four yards to go. So I'm thinking a quick pass to Benning, maybe. Yeah, I mean, you have to throw it. There's only 14 seconds left. You know, you. you I guess the goal here is to either try and throw it deep or try and get in field goal range. So I would say, yeah, the quick pass to Benning has worked all game. They've gotten a couple good plays on that, so that would be a great option. Uh, the longest pick by Will Bowerly this season is 39 yards, so if they want to try a field goal, uh, they got to get about, about at least about 16 more yards to try a field goal. Uh, his longest is 39. They do have a timeout, so as long as they get the first down, they can work the middle of the field here. Shotgun for Rezac. Snap back, it'll be a run play, and I don't think, oh, well, it looks like gonna, he got it. It's gonna be really close, but I think he got it by a yard. Yeah, the officials waving the, the sideline crew to bring the uh, down markers downfield, so it will be, Seven seconds left, and the ball's on the 36. Yes. You know, they might try 
they got to get down to about, I'm thinking somewhere around inside the 25 yard line to maybe try a field goal. There's not much wind here at all tonight. Uh, started out about seven miles per hour, but the flags on the uh, uprights on the goalposts, not much. So maybe they'll go deep to try a touchdown or maybe they can uh, make a quick pass. Uh, they've got nine seconds left. They could make a play down near the sidelines, just try to get it down to about the inside the 20, 25 for Bowerly to try a field goal. Yeah, and you do have to get out of bounds here. Westside just used their last timeout, so they will have to get out of bounds if they want to try a field goal. Otherwise, it's pretty much a Hail Mary chance here for Westside. Rezac in the shotgun. Jamez Ross is on his left. Snap back to Rezac. He's going to throw it. Rezac's looking. He'll throw it up. And it's incomplete. It was out of reach. Nowhere near. It look, he was looking for Trevor Spady there. It was just overthrown. So second down and 10. They did get the first down. So second down and 10. Set. And they'll probably do the Hail Mary again. That's a little too far for Will Bowerly to boot it. No, they are they going to try a field goal? They are going to try a field goal here, Ross. Okay, that's about 52 yards. 52 yards, folks. Tristan Alvano a year ago did this, and now Will Bowerly is going to take a shot. This is going to be a fun thing to see. Here we go. Kick is up. Oh. oh. Just missed it. And that will take us to halftime, Ross. Yeah, it was a great first half for the Warriors. You couldn't ask for anything better, 28 to nothing. Let's run down the scoring, how it went here in the first half for Westside. In the first quarter, the Warriors uh, took the lead on an 11-yard run by Anthony Rezac with 8.37 left to make it 7 to nothing. Then, uh, in the second quarter, Westside scored on an eight-yard run by Jamez Ross, and then a fumble by Bellevue West on the one-yard line, and Westside drives all the way downfield, capped off by a 57-yard pass from Rezac to Christian Jones. That made it 21 to nothing with 4.09 left, and then with 2.23 left, uh, Westside Anthony Rezac threw a touchdown pass to make it 28 to nothing, and that's the way we stand at halftime. Yeah, we look, you know, you look at the first half, I'd say Bellevue West, you know, they had a lot of crucial mistakes. Danny Kalen threw an interception that brought Westside within the 10 yard line, and then at the one yard line, Danny Kalen fumbled the football on a huge opportunity for Bellevue West to score. Okay, we're going to leave you right now, but uh, we've got the West Side drill team out on the field, and we'll watch them, and we'll see you back here for the second half.
batteries are right there. There's two batteries there, and there's two batteries down there. Yeah, those are ready. I powered them up all week. Got, because last year, Bethany was, Bethany was powered up.
Welcome back here to Phelps Field. We've got the start of the second half coming up here. It is 28-0 Westside, a great first half showing from the Warriors. Yeah, it was a matchup in the first half. Mistakes very costly for Bellevue West. They threw a, an interception on their opening possession. Teddy Rezac intercepted the ball, and then just a few plays later, Westside quarterback Anthony Rezac ran in from 11 yards out for a touchdown to make it seven to nothing. And then in the second quarter, the Warriors exploded for three touchdowns, uh, an eight yard run by Jamez Ross. Uh, and then Bellevue West fumbled on West Side's one yard line. And then the Warriors drove 99 yards, capped off by a 57 yard pass from Rezac to Christian Jones to make it 21 to nothing. And then West Side capped off uh, the first half with a touchdown pass from Rezac to make it 28 to nothing. And that's the way we stand right now. Aiden, it's Bellevue West has to have a big third quarter. This game's over. Yeah, Bellevue West, absolutely. They're going to get the ball first here, so that is something to look out for. They need to score here. Absolutely have to score here if you're Bellevue West. Got to make sure you don't turn the ball over. So if you don't score, you have somewhat of a chance to flip the field. But... Other than that, Bellevue West needs a big, big quarter here. West side will kick off from the uh, left side of your screen, uh, and they will kick off to the north side. Uh, Bellevue West will receive the second half kickoff, and the Warriors will try to win this game and advance to the semifinals next Friday night where the winner of this game will play Millard West, who won earlier today against Grand Island. And the final of that game was 31 to seven. Uh, Millard West winning that game. They have advanced to the semifinals. They played that game at four o'clock out of Buell Stadium. So the winner of this game, and it looks like Westside right now, here at halftime with a 28 to nothing lead. And if the Warriors win, the game will be here at Phelps Field next Friday. Uh, but first they have to win this game here in the second half. They've got a 28 to nothing lead. And, uh, but you gotta remember Bellevue West have an explosive offense with three Husker recruits, Isaiah McMorris, Davon Hall, and the quarterback, Danny Kalen. So Will Bowerly will kick it off. Speaking of Isaiah McMorris, he is one of the returners back there. Here's Bowerly's kick, he boots it deep. And that is gonna be another touchback for Will Bowerly. So Bellevue West will start at the 20 and they really have to have it here, Ross. Will Bowerly has about uh, 50 touchbacks so far this season. He's had a great year. Yeah, really, really impressive how he has, you know, taken Tristan Alvano's spot. He's filled it pretty well. He did kick a 52-yarder at the end of the sec uh, first half, excuse me, and he did not make it, but it was close. Kalen in the shotgun. Snap back, it's a handoff up the middle. Nice move! Here's Goff. Goff up to about the 45-yard line in a big first play for Bellevue West. 25 yards up the middle for C.J. Goff. C.J. Goff has had a terrific season. He is the leading rusher for this Bellevue West team, and he's really done a good job all season long. And no surprise there with his longest run of this game, 25 yards. Big play for Bellevue West, but can they continue it? Low snap to Kalen. It's going to be a little screen pass and blown up. Blown up in the backfield. That looks like Christian Jones. It was Whaley on the catch, but he gets blown up. Yeah, Christian Jones, one of the best players on this West Side defense. He's the top rated junior in his class in the state of Nebraska. Has tremendous speed, finished in seventh place in the 100 meters at the state track meet last May. So he's got a lot of speed and can make the play. It'll be second down in about 12. It's gonna be a keeper for Kalen. Kalen up the middle, a nice gain for Danny Kalen. He'll take it to about the West Side. 48, he's close to a first down, maybe a yard or two short. Nice run by Danny Kalen. You haven't seen much of that this season. He doesn't run the ball very much, but a nice run there. Gain of nine yards will bring up third down and one on the 48. 
Bellevue West, third and one. They have had a third and one earlier, but a false start sent them back, forced them to throw. Here's Kalen. Snap back, he will throw. Kalen's looking deep, and it's incomplete. And a flag is thrown. It looks like Jordan Hurst is going to get called for pass interference here. McMorris was the man he was looking for, and a flag comes out. Yep, Jordan Hurst, pass interference, a big time call for Bellevue West here. That'll move the ball up 15 yards into West Side territory. Well, if you didn't see it on our screen, it was a play downfield, and Bellevue West will have first and 10 from the 34 yard line. Big penalty call there for Bellevue West. They really need to score here. They're in good position to do so. We'll see if they can do it. Danny Kalen and Goff in the backfield. Snap back, it's a handoff to Goff again and he swallowed immediately by that linebacker core from west side. Big stop up the middle there. It looked like Nick Anglum up there for the Warriors made a stop. It's a big stop there for west side. It still is a gain of three, not a bad gain on first down for Bellevue West. See what they do here, second down. Looks like Green is coming to the game for Bellevue West, the receiver on the right. Goff still in the backfield with Kalen. Shotgun for Bellevue West. Snap back to Kalen. He will roll out. He's looking to throw it, and he is going to be sacked. It is Bo Ryan. <laughs> Bo Ryan, the leading tackler for the Warriors, breaks through, gets another tackle for a loss. A big sack there, though for him, and you gotta love it. That's gonna bring up third down and 16 to go, and they've gotta get all the way down to the 22 yard line for a first down. Big play by the Warriors. Yeah, and after, you know, you can get a chunk play here, but you're definitely gonna have to go for it on fourth down if you're Bellevue West. Bo Ryan has been all over the field today. What an amazing sack. Kalen's looking to throw, he'll go deep, and it is gonna be incomplete. Doesn't look like there's any flags. Looking for green. It was good coverage by the Warriors. Yeah, look for Danny Kalen to go for that deep ball. He's got two great wide receivers in McMorris and Hall. Davon Hall, tremendous speed for the Thunderbirds. Looking for that big play. And that'll bring up fourth down and 16 now. Well, Ross, they have already converted a fourth and 14. It was a pass to Ben Goodwater. So we'll see if they can't do it again they're gonna punt it actually Kalen will boot it it's a low punt it's gonna be caught by Benning and he will be tackled immediately by Bellevue West's return team yeah even though Kalen's in the game he's also the punter for Bellevue West so when he's down on the field it looks like uh, they're gonna be very careful down there and I just looked at the west side sideline and it looks like Teddy Rezac is in street clothes right now so he is not in the game uh, he is not playing I remember he had kind of walked off the field midway through I think it was the first quarter uh, he had an interception but uh, Teddy Rezac on the sidelines in street clothes that's a huge loss for the Warriors their starting safety one of their best players Notre Dame commit Snap back, it'll be a little handoff to Jamez Ross. He's looking to bounce it, and he's brought down immediately by Bell West. Nothing going there for Jamez Ross. It'll be a loss on the play. Bellevue West fired up for this second half, especially their defense. You know, the, they stopped West Side at the end of the first half uh, running the ball, and uh, maybe they've come back. Maybe they've discovered something that can give them some success on defense, but uh, we'll see what happens here in the second half. Rizak once again in the shotgun with John Mesres on his right. Rizak will keep it. He'll go up the middle, but he's stuffed. He'll get to about the 20, maybe the original line of scrimmage for Westside. Smart play by uh, Anthony Rizak there. You don't want to make a turnover or throw a pass or uh, get a turnover right there because you're deep in your own territory about the 20-yard line, but that'll bring up third down and 10 from the 20-yard line. 
Yeah, and even though Westside's not doing anything too flashy, they are chewing a lot of clock here. Seven, under eight minutes here in the third quarter. It'll be a snap back to Rizek. He's looking to throw. He'll throw over to the side. That one's caught, but a good tackle in open field and nothing going there for, it looks like Brody Gock with the catch and it will be fourth down. Good series there by Bellevue West. West side, three and out. And that's what they had to do here in the second half. And Bellevue West trying just to get on the scoreboard here. Maybe they can do it. And Westside will punt away. Punter will be back, Bowerly back on about the six yard line. Snap back to Bowerly, he will boot it away. Back deep, looks like Isaiah McMorris. It'll take a west side bounce and a generous one down to about the 28 yard line. That one landed initially at about the 40, but it took about a 12 yard bounce there and Bellevue West will start at about the 28 yard line. <laughs> That's a tremendous punt of about 52 yards right there by Will Bowerly, took a terrific bounce and that really pushes back Bellevue West. They were looking to maybe get the ball towards midfield, but uh, just a great job by uh, Will Bowerly, the punter for West Side. Danny Kalen still in the backfield. Goff on his right. Snap back to Kalen, he's gonna look to throw. He's gonna go deep, looking downfield and it's incomplete. Unable to get it to his receiver. And that's what Bellevue West is trying to do. Kalen's looking for that big play to ignite this Bellevue West offense. He has such a strong arm, looking for a receiver downfield and uh, that's kind of the game plan here in the second half. They aren't getting much yardage against this West side defense, but uh, the arm of Danny Kalen, he can turn this game around with some big plays, and that's what Bellevue West is trying to do. It'll be second down and 10 for the Thunderbirds. Snap back to Kalen. He's going to look to throw again. That one's over, and it's incomplete, and a flag is down. Isaiah McMorris was the intended receiver, and it looks like we're going to get another defensive pass interference here. Well you could see the reaction of the Bellevue West uh, bench and over there on the sideline. Uh, they thought there was pass interference and the officials agreed. So it'll be first down for the Thunderbirds on the, it looks like the 45 yard line of Bellevue West. Another big break for Bellevue West there. It would have been third down and 10 if there wasn't a penalty there. So Bellevue West with a fresh set of downs here. Danny Kalen back in the shotgun once again. Goff on his left. Snap back. Kalen's going to look to throw. He'll look deep once again. He's got a man, and it's incomplete. He had Isaiah McMorris, but he underthrew him. And Caleb Benning was all over him, though. I mean, Caleb and McMorris, the two Nebraska recruits, going at it, both of them, and uh, Caleb won that battle. It'll be second down and 10 for Bellevue West. Looking for a play on the sideline. Danny Kalen in shotgun once again. Goff on his left. In motion is Whaley. Snap back, it'll be a quick toss to Goff, but he's blown up immediately. Nowhere to go for Bellevue West. That's gonna bring up a third and long. RJ Eckert there on the tackle for West Side. He leads the team in sacks, but there he just gets a tackle right about the line of scrimmage. Nice play by him, and that'll bring up third down and 10 for the Thunderbirds. And most of all, the clock just keeps running. That's what you want for West Side. Yeah, 6.15 left in the third quarter. Bellevue West, if they want a chance, they gotta get going here. They're gonna need to score soon. Snap back to Kalen. He's gonna look to throw again over the middle. It's incomplete. Oh, they're going to say picked, intercepted by Westside. Oh, no, they're going to say incomplete. Caleb Benning thought he had a pick, but it is going to be called incomplete. Oh, that was a tough call. It looked like the ball didn't touch the ground, and Caleb thought he had an interception, but the officials ruled it incomplete. But Benning will go back for the punt right now, Kalen will be back on about his, looks like his 33 yard line and uh, Benning will be back on the 22. 
Kalen will boot it away. Betting's gonna call for a fair catch at the 21 yard line. So Westside will have it back at the 21. Another good series by the Westside defense. They stopped the Thunderbirds right there. And Westside, you know, you wanna play it safe. You don't wanna risk, uh, you know, a turnover or, you know, a dangerous play. Uh, you just wanna keep that clock running as much as possible. I, we're at the six minute mark right now in the middle of the third quarter and the, the clock is Westside's best friend. Yeah, I look to see Westside run here a lot. Jamez Ross in the backfield with Anthony Rizak. It is gonna be a handoff. Jamez Ross up the middle, big gain for Jamez Ross. He'll get a first down and more up to the 32 yard line. Ah, that's the best run he's had here in the second half, a nice 14 yard run. Jamez has rushed for over a thousand yards this season. He has scored more touchdowns than anyone else uh, on the team. Just a really solid runner up the middle. It'll be another handoff. Jamez Ross looking to get cut to the outside, but he's gonna be swallowed up immediately. Bellevue West not allowing any of that, and he will get maybe a yard there. Well, this will bring up a passing situation probably. Second down and 11. Yeah, West side making some substitutions here, trying to get some receivers in the game. Could see maybe a short pass to Caleb Benning. We saw that a lot in the first half. We'll have to see what they decide to do here, though. West side in the pistol. It'll be a snap back. It's going to be a pass from Anthony Rizak. He's looking. He'll run up the middle. He breaks free, and McMorris will pull him down. Almost taken down in the backfield, but instead he'll get up to about the 39, and he'll be about three yards short of a first down. Good run by Anthony Rizak, didn't see anybody open, decided to tuck the ball in and run it up himself, and good run, just about three yards short of a first down. Big time run for Rizak, they're gonna go quick, and that one's gonna be caught on the sideline, so a first down for Westside, Keenan Cotton. First down, big time first down. Well, that's what they needed, a first down, keep this drive alive, and also, Keep this clock running. Under five minutes to go in this third quarter. They will continue to chew this clock. They'll chew it to the end of the game if they can. Snap back to Rizak. It's a little draw play to Jamez Ross, and he is just barreling forward. He'll get about five yards there on first down. I tell you, this offensive line is moving. Oh, it looks like we have a player down. That's number 68, the right tackle, Connor Wayne. Kind of slow getting up. Hope that he is okay. West side, Rizak back in the shotgun once again. Snap back, Rizak's gonna pump fake. He's looking to throw, he's got a man. It's caught and it'll be taken up to about the 41 and he is driven back. But forward progress will give him the first down. It looked like uh, Rizak was trying to throw downfield. He fake pumped, looked downfield again, but then found a receiver open in the flat for a nice gain for a first down. Another big first down for Westside. They can just continue to chew clock under three minutes, under four minutes here, sorry. Rizak back in the shotgun again, fresh set of downs here. Snap back, it'll be a quick pass. Caleb Benning's got it, Caleb Benning's got space. He takes a hit and he will go down at about the 35, a gain of about five or six. And that'll just be short of a first down by about three yards. Good quick screen pass right there from West Side. Rezac's back in the shotgun once again. Jamez Ross on his left. Snap back to Rizak, he's gonna throw again. Another quick pass over to the side. It'll be caught in the flat and brought. Wow, nice after catch run there. It looks like Brody Gock on the catch. All the way up to around the 24 and it'll be a first down for Westside. Just a nice play over there along the far sidelines for the Warriors.
Westside can take their time here. They just need to chew as much clock as possible. We're well, under three I'll minutes now. I'll tell you, now. this drive's taking forever. I mean, it, uh, we're down to the 2.45 mark. I think they got the ball with about seven minutes to go in the third quarter. They're really chewing up the clock. Rezac in the shotgun again in a whistle at the start of the play. The timeout by Westside. So and we'll take a timeout here on Warrior Television with the score Westside 28 and Bellevue West nothing. We'll be back right after this timeout. Welcome back here to Phelps Field. Westside driving. We're under three minutes here in the uh, third quarter. Rezac in the shotgun. He'll throw again another quick pass. That is a dangerous throw. It is caught by Keenan Cotton. He'll get maybe a yard there, but nothing more. Caprice Keith, the defensive back for Bellevue West, almost picked off that play. And uh, I'm telling you, there was nobody to the west side uh, backfield and he was gonna go all the way, but a nice play by him and west side faces second down and nine. Second and nine here for west side. Anthony Rezac in the shotgun. He'll just hand it off quickly to Jamas Ross. There goes Jamas Ross down the right side. He breaks a couple of tackles and he hits the sticks, but it looks like it's gonna be close to a first down for Jamas Ross. Nice run by Jamas down the sidelines just keeps pushing this drive even farther downfield. Just a really nice run by Ross all the way down there to about the 16 yard line. It'll be third and a yard. We are under two minutes in the third quarter now. Westside has the ball up to the 16 yard line here. A big time drive for Westside. They have chewed a lot of the clock here. Rezac's in the shotgun. Snap back. It'll be a quick handoff. Ross is tackled in the backfield. Great job from Bellevue West. And that'll be fourth down and about two yards to go. There's West Side. Looks like they're going to go for it here. Will Bowerly is not on the field. Interesting decision to go for it here. Kind of just chewing clock, chewing clock. We'll see if maybe they just try and get him to jump off sides or if they run it. It looks like Bo Ryan is in it running back here. Snap back, it's gonna be a quarterback drop. The middle, Anthony Rezac, and he will score. Oh. Touchdown, West Side. What a play call. A 17 yard run up the middle on fourth down by Anthony Rezac. What a run by him. Great touchdown run by Anthony Rezac. Really nice play. Looks like we have a player down here for Bellevue West. Talking about that play, you know, they put Bo Ryan in at running back. He was kind of just the wedge. He just went in there kind of as a fullback and just paved the path for Anthony Rezac to score there. What a drive by this Warrior team, though, all the way downfield. Really chewed up a lot of time, about seven minutes on the clock and it was about a 70 yard drive that they had and uh, we hope it's a west side player who is down on the field right now. We can't tell the number right now. Actually it looks like there's two players down Ross. It looks like a Bellevue West and a west side player. Yeah, the west side player went down late uh, after the play was way over. And the Bellevue West player is now getting up. As you can hear a round of applause, looks like it was 
Caprice Keith, thankfully. It looks like he is okay. West side player is still getting looked at. And he will now get up. It's like number 68. Thank you, 68 is Connor Wayne. You know, he kind of stumbled earlier on this drive. I thought he had some trouble getting up, but Connor Wayne coming off the field. He's the right tackle, number 68 for West Side. He's got his arm around a couple people just kind of coming over to the sidelines, kind of limping a little bit, but he's been a valuable starter on that right side of the offensive line for the Warriors. We hope everything's all right there for Connor Wayne for West Side. Now Will Bowerly will come up to for the point after touchdown. Snaps good, holds good, kick is up, and it is good. 35-0 here, almost the end of the third quarter. And most important now is a running clock. The clock will run and not stop anytime you're up by 35 points in the second half. It's a running clock. So that's where we stand right now. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more action here in the third quarter. Welcome back here to Phelps Field. We are almost at the end of the third quarter. Westside is up 35-0, just scored on a Anthony Rezac touchdown run. It is going to be a different kicker here for Westside. McMorris and maybe Davon Hall back there to receive. It's a short kick. Looking for a return is Bellevue West and they are not going to get too far, maybe up to the 25. Davon Hall with the return. Okay, even though uh, we have the change of possession here after the kickoff, the clock continues to run because it's a 35-point lead by the Warriors. We will have the running clock the rest of the game as long as it spans 35 points. Expect Bellevue West to throw pretty much every play here. They're looking for any explosive play they can get. That one's a quick throw over to the side. It'll be caught and it will be snuffed out. It looks like that was Trevor Spady on the tackle. Well, that will mark the end of the third quarter with the score 35 to nothing. We'll be back with the fourth quarter right after this. Ready? Welcome back here to Phelps Field. It is fourth quarter action now, 35-0 west side in a running clock. Bellevue West will take over here on the 33-yard line. Kalen's in the shotgun. 
Well, there's Coach Lamangi, and he's coaching with a heavy heart tonight because yesterday his mother, Kathy Lamangi, passed away at 84 years old. She was married 63 years to her husband, Paul, and she has two survivors, daughter Amy and, of course, her son, Paul Lamangi, the head coach of the Westside football team. Um, they have three uh, granddaughters. Um, coach Lamangi's mom, Kathleen Lamangi, uh, passed away yesterday in Youngstown, Ohio. And this has been uh, just really a tough 24 hours for the head coach for Westside. He told the team last night after practice that his mother had passed away. And it was just a real frank discussion with the West Side team. And uh, he told them he was gonna, his mother wanted him to coach the game tonight. Uh, before she had passed away, she was ill. Um, and she had some dialysis problems and she passed away yesterday. But uh, Coach Lamangi will uh, attend the funeral next Wednesday in Youngstown, Ohio. So Coach Paul Lamangi, his mother, Kathy Lamangi, uh, passed away yesterday at the age of 84. So we all wish the best for the Lamangi family and of course the head coach, Paul Lamangi, uh, who has done just a great job in his, just his second season here at Westside High School and has become a real favorite in the hallways here of Westside High School. So uh, our hearts go out to the Lamangi family and head coach Paul Lamangi for this game. Aiden? Yeah, absolutely. Thoughts are out to Paul Lamangi. Coaching the game today, done an incredible job so far. 35 nothing west side. Rezac will be in the shotgun here. Looks like Brody Gox the running back. Rezac's going to take it up the middle, but he'll be stuffed and maybe a gain of one or back to the line of scrimmage. No gain, second and ten. West side looking for a play on the sideline. They're taking their time. They don't need to hurry it at, at all. It's 35 nothing here in the fourth quarter. They're trying to waste as much clock as possible. Yeah, they have the uh, the clocks in the end zone, and uh, Anthony Rezac is looking at those and watching them go down as far as they can go to you know make this game as quick as possible. Snap back, it's a handoff to Brody Gock. Brody Gock with a big hole. Here comes Brody Gock. Brody Gock down the sideline. He will score. Touchdown, West Side. A 49 yard run by Brody Gock. What a run! All the way down the sidelines. And that puts the Warriors up 41 to nothing. Brody Gock with the long run down the sidelines. He showed some speed on that play. I didn't know Brody could go that fast. Yeah, he is a very fast player. I saw him score against Lincoln Northeast. He was zooming out there. 49 yards, great run by Brody Garak. Bowerly with the kick here. It is up and it is good. 42 nothing here at Phelps Field with 9.01 left in the fourth quarter. And we'll take a break right here on the Warrior Television Network, and we'll be back with more fourth quarter action with West Side Ahead, 42 to nothing over Bellevue West. Welcome back here to Phelps Field. It is 42-0 with nine minutes in the fourth quarter. Westside dominating this one, and they will kick it off now. 
That one is booted down the field. It's going to be green to, oh, and a oh. huge mistake. <laughs> he caught the ball and he went out at about the two yard line. That is something you never want to do. He should have let it go into the end zone, but man, what a mistake by Bellevue West. They could have had it out at the 20 yard line. Instead, they're down at about the three. Yeah, that one might have also gone out of bounds too. Would have been put the ball at the 35. So a huge mistake from Bellevue West. They've got to go about 97 yards and they only have about eight minutes to really do much. Kalen in the backfield would be a handoff to Goff up the middle. Goff, a nice burst of speed. And that looks like it'll be a first down for Bellevue West at the 15 yard line. Yeah, just they just want to get out of that end zone. Kalen was taking the ball and the shotgun from in the end zone. He needs some room to work. But that nice run up there gives a first down here. Under eight minutes to go in this game now. Kalen in the shotgun. Once again, Goff on his left. Snap back to Kalen. He will roll out. He's looking to throw. Looking down the sideline, he'll just throw it away. Nothing open there for Bellevue West. You know, it's amazing when you look at the start of the season. West Side was the preseason number one pick by the Omaha World Herald, and Bellevue West was ranked number two in the preseason poll. And then it just seemed to really fall apart for Bellevue West at the start of the season. And They've really struggled despite having three Nebraska recruits, a quarterback and two wide receivers in Isaiah McMorris and Davon Hall. And you know, those, such high expectations for this Bellevue West team with Danny Kalen at quarterback who had committed to the University of Missouri, then decommitted and went to Nebraska. Uh, just what a surprise the way that the Thunderbirds have played this year, you expected them to be right in the hunt with those three Nebraska recruits, but it just hasn't happened for the Thunderbirds coming into this game with a seven and three record and likely they'll finish seven and four. Big disappointment for the Thunderbirds to finish this season the way they did. And the big surprise for me in this game is that they haven't gotten on the scoreboard. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's a really big surprise. Yeah, with how explosive this offense is, it really is. I mean, they've got two, three Nebraska commits on offense. It's pretty impressive that the Warrior defense has done so well. That is a short punt, and it is going to be down at about the 36-yard line. So amazing field position here for Westside. And you got to, the Thunderbirds, you got to feel for them. They get... This is such a disappointment, their season. They were looking for a state championship to end their careers, and uh, it may go down right here, it looks like, here in the quarterfinals. Uh, not the season they anticipated, and uh, they've had such a strong tradition down there at Bellevue West with their state championship teams. One of the best ones I ever saw was back in uh, 2019. 2020 uh, when they went undefeated for a state championship. Handoff Brody Gock, he'll take it up the sideline again. Brody Gock is getting some chunk plays here for the Warriors and it's a first down up to the 21 yard line. <laughs> Brody's fresh off the sidelines. I think he, he really wants to run the ball tonight but uh, he's a good runner and he's already had a 49 yard run for a touchdown tonight. He wants another one. Big time play there for Brody Gock. Westside is just trying to run this clock out. Snap back, another handoff. Brody Gock up the middle again. Brody Gock breaking some tackles. Brody Gock is still going, and he will be finally brought down at about the four yard line. What a run from Brody Gock. Brody just like a steamroller. He didn't want to go down, just wanted to keep running and running, and Brody's doing a great job down there. Another touchdown. Hope for him. Snap back, another handoff to Brody Gock. Brody Gock up the middle, and that will be another touchdown. Brody Gock, second of the night. They hand it off to him a couple times, and he's in the end zone. A four-yard touchdown run right there by Brody Gock. 
makes it 48 to nothing, and Will Bowerly will come on here for the extra point. But that's not Brody, that's number 30, one of the backups. Kick is up, and it is good. It's up and good. Looks like that kick. That's Everest Scherzlin, sophomore kicker, 5'8". That's who made the extra point. And Westside now leads 49 to nothing. We'll be right back here on the Warrior Television Network with more fourth quarter action with the Warriors ahead, 49 to nothing. Welcome back here to Phelps Field. Westside will kick it off. It'll be Sherls in the backup kicker for Westside. He is setting up for this kick. And he is going to send it. It's a low kick. And that one looks like it's going to go out of bounds. So a penalty flag will come out here. And Bellevue West is going to start at their 35-yard line. Four seventeen left in the fourth quarter. Bellevue West will come out here and just try and maybe put up some bit of hope. Just maybe get a touchdown for the morality of it, but we'll have to see if they can do that. You know, Aiden, we got to come up with a player of the game here to talk to afterwards. There have been a lot of people that have done great things tonight. Absolutely. Uh, especially on defense. I mean, you shut out Bellevue West. We might have to pick somebody from the defense, maybe uh, Bo Ryan. I was thinking Bo Ryan. I was Ryan. thinking Bo Ryan, the middle linebacker. Yeah, he has had an unbelievable game, Ross. He's had a couple of sacks, a lot of TFLs. He's been all over the field tonight, and he really has been a big reason that this West Side defense has shut this Bellevue uh, West team out. Snap back to Kalen. He'll just flip it off. And it's going to be Goff. He'll take it up to about the 43-yard line. A nine-yard pickup. Well, Bellevue West right now, they just want to avoid a shutout. This doesn't look good, a 49 to nothing score. They just want to get something on the board uh, so it doesn't look as bad as it does right now at 49 zip. Kalen in the shotgun once again. Goff to his left. Green in, it'll be flipped to Green. Green on the outside, he's looking to find the edge, but he will be tackled quickly and not much going there for Green. Under three minutes to play in this game. West side, one of their, it, this might be the best game they've played this year. I mean, against a quality opponent, uh, 49 to nothing. I mean, it is nothing that, I don't think a lot of people expected a shutout and Bellevue West is trying to avoid that right now. I certainly did not expect a shutout, I'm gonna be honest. Kalen in the shotgun here, motion again, it's McMorris. Kalen's gonna look to throw, he'll go over the top, it's gonna be wide open, it's Goff, and the shutout is gone, touchdown, C.J. Goff. Well, you knew it had to come sometime. Flag oh, down, Oh, we've got though. a flag, oh my gosh. This one might be And they're be bringing it back. back. Oh. Oh, Bellevue West just got to be holding on Bellevue West. That's oh, a, my gosh. That's a kicker right there. Yeah, that, you know, Bellevue West is so, has its starters in there. A lot of subs, substitutes, reserves there for the Warriors. But that's going to push it back right now to about the 40-yard line. It'll be first down and 15 to go. And the clock is running out here on Bellevue West. It was a beautiful pass by Kalen, called back by the penalty. 
Snap back, handoff to Goff. He'll get about three, four yards there, but tackled by the West Side defense. Yeah, a lot of extracurricular activities down there on the field. No flags are thrown. But this will bring up uh, about second down and about, it looks like, 11 yards to go. And that clock continues to tick. About 140 left in this one. Bellevue West just looking to maybe get on the scoreboard here. That one will be swung out to Whaley. There's Whaley. He'll get a good mount on that one. It'll be third and short for Bellevue West. And even though the player went out of bounds, the receiver on that play, the clock continues to roll. No stopping it now with a 49-point margin. Clock is ticking. 110 left here at Phelps Field. It'll be a quick toss to Goff. Goff down the edge, and he will be tackled quickly for about a gain of maybe two. Well, West Side's really had a great game uh, tonight, and our player of the game stand by. We'll have that right after we have this play. We're down to 48 seconds left. We're gonna send Aiden down on the field to get our player of the game, and uh, so stick around for that. But uh, a drop pass right there by Bellevue West. And Bellevue West may get, no, it'll, that'll be it. Westside comes off the field right now and Bellevue West comes off the field. That might be the end of the game right there because the clock is rolling. That is the end of the game. The final score was Westside 49 and Bellevue West nothing. A shutout for the Warriors. They raised their record to 11 and 0 on the season and Bellevue West ends the year with a 7 and four record. Let's run down the scoring uh, while both teams do their handshakes. Westside started the scoring in the first quarter. Oh, we've got some fireworks out there on the field. Just <laughs> from the Westside neighborhood. Okay, we'll run down the scoring again. Uh, Anthony Rizak started off the scoring with an 11 yard run with 8.37 to go in the first quarter to make it seven to nothing. Then in the second quarter, Westside scored three touchdowns. Uh, the first one was on an eight yard run by Jamez Ross with 11.56 to go to make it 14 to nothing. Later in the second quarter, after Bellevue West fumbled on the Westside one yard line, the Warriors drove 99 yards capped off by a 57-yard pass from Anthony Rezac to Christian Jones, who was wide open on the play. That made the score 21 to nothing with 4.09 left at, in the second quarter. Then Westside added a touchdown with 2.23 left on a Rezac uh, touchdown pass to make it 28 to nothing at halftime. Then in the third quarter, Westside's uh, Anthony Rezac scored on a 17-yard run with 42 seconds left in the third quarter to make it 35 to nothing. Then in the fourth quarter, it was the Brody Gox show. Brody came through with a 49-yard touchdown run down the near sidelines uh, with 9:01 left to make it 42 to nothing. Then Gox added one more touchdown, the final scoring of the game. With 4.17 left, he scored on a four-yard touchdown run, his second of the game, and that made the final score West Side 49 and Bellevue West nothing. West Side advances to the semifinals next Friday, one week from tonight. They will play Millard West, who won their game against Grand Island today, 31 to seven. So the game in the semifinals will be here at Buell Field next Friday night. And we also have to keep an eye on the other two playoff games that are happening right now. They started at eight o'clock. Elkhorn South is hosting Lincoln East and then Omaha North is at Millard South. Those two games started at eight o'clock and we'll try to see if we can get some scores on that. But for right now, you can see 
Coach Paul Lamangi talking to his players out on the field. And this has been a tough night for the head coach for the Warriors. His mother, Kathy Lamangi, passed away yesterday at the age of 84. Uh, she was married to her husband, Paul, for 63 years. And he's survived by the, his daughter, Amy, and her son, Paul, uh, three granddaughters. Um, Kathleen Imanji passed away in Youngstown, Ohio yesterday. There'll be a funeral for her on Wednesday. And Coach Lamangi told the team last night after practice that his mother had passed away. He said, family is it to the players. He goes, I was deeply loved uh, by his mom and that love gave me the courage to love you guys. And that's what he told the team last night after practice in the little theater at Westside High School. There you see the Warriors celebrating out on the field one last time here tonight with a 49 to nothing final. Uh, we're gonna come back with our player of the game. Uh, it's gonna be a defensive player, I can tell you that right now, but uh, Aiden uh, Dunlap, our play-by-play -play announcer tonight, he'll bring uh, up our player of the game, so stick around uh, for that, folks, and we'll have that right after this timeout, after the celebration by the Warriors, right after this timeout. Ready? Mm -hmm.
Are you good? Yeah, I can hear. Here, move the mic a little closer. Okay. Yeah. All right. Welcome back here at Phelps Field. I'm with our player of the game, Bo Ryan. Bo, you had an amazing game today out there. You had a couple of sacks, a lot of TFLs, and you <laughs> you were really all over the place today. You know, I was yeah, you you have a lot of motivation out there. I was just wondering, like, what motivates you to play like that every game? Well, you know, the main thing that motivates me is just playing for my teammates. I I, I don't. That's the real thing I play for. I play to protect all my brothers and just do it for them. That's what I play for. You know, next week you're going in. You have Millard West. What What do you guys need to do to prepare for that game? You know, I think we just just do the same thing that we've done every single week. Just climb up the mountain. Just keep getting better. And I think I think we'll like the results. That's great. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. This is WTV Live, and that will finish our broadcast for the night. Bo Ryan, the player of the game. Thank you.